Today, I'm talking about incubating the forces of increase. Incubating the forces of increase. What does it mean? We want to brew. There are, there are forces that provoke increase. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are forces that provoke increase. Let's turn into Luke chapter 5 in verse 4 to 6. Luke chapter 5 in verse 4. Sorry, in verse 4. Luke chapter 5 verse 4. This is the story where Jesus Christ had used the, the, the boat of Peter and he came to Peter. Peter had fished all night and caught nothing. And the reason why this is symbolic is this. Some of you during this season, you've done a lot of business and nothing has happened. You know, it seems as if you're losing more money, you've spent your savings. Some people have lost their jobs. Some people are, not, some people are just scared of what the financial future holds. So they are hurting and saving. And I understand that. No, but no parents want to ever be in a situation where your children say, Daddy, school fees, and there's no money to pay school fees. Nobody ever wants to be in a situation where you go to the hospital and you're not able to pay hospital, hospital bill and because of that, a family member gets into trouble. So everybody is just very careful about finances at the season. And I understand that. Because when you, when you live in the kind of world that we live in, where the, the privacy can lead to devaluation of human beings, it's horrible. Sometimes you hear horrible stories of how people lose someone to death because they were not able to afford 20000 naira to buy drugs. 30,000 naira to pay hospital bill, 50,000 naira to do an operation. And for some of you that live outside this country, you feel that's ridiculous. I understand what you're saying, but that's the reality where we are. And because of that, it's huge. It's an economy where those that are really rich and have power will ride literally on the heads of those that don't have power. It's sometimes you will see a young girl that will have to sleep with someone just to be able to pay school fees. And I'm saying so, and because all of us have those stories, all of us know those stories, everybody has finances and economy as somewhere ahead of them. There are people that currently run companies and they're really scared. And they're really scared because one of the biggest questions on the mind of entrepreneurs right now is that, am I able to sustain the salaries of those that work for me? Am I sure I'm able to do it? How long will we be able to do it? Because oil prices are coming down inflation rate is surging up the roof the dollar exchange is surging up the roof the prices of things are going so high domestic inflation so high and they wonder what's going to happen and, and let me say some to you you know as much as god is concerned about our spirit as much as god is concerned about our prayer life god is so concerned about you doing well in life also the reason why is this most of the devaluation of human beings happen in places of poverty. It's in places of poverty you see people sell their children, sex trafficking. It's a place of devaluation of life. You see people do extreme things just to get money. And why that is extreme? Some of you, your case is not that way. Your case is that you're doing well. It's okay. But you're just wondering, what is the next thing to do financially? I, I want to make sure I'm not grounded. I, I want to know that the next phase, I'm not excluded. You, if there's that dream you have in your heart, I do not want to be excluded in the next phase. You're asking, what is the next financial goal for me? How can I make sure I'm actually progressive and I'm not regressive? Luke chapter 5. And this is a very powerful story in the Bible. One of my favorite stories of Jesus and Peter. Verse 4. Jesus Christ had finished talking with Peter's boat. And when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, because this was Simon, he barely knew Jesus at this point, this Simon Peter. He, he, he told Peter, he says, launch out into the deep and let down your net for a catch. You know, I love, see, there's so much, next week I will shed more light on this. There's so much to learn from this. But one of the things I want to see is this, Jesus, several people there, fished all night and they all caught nothing jesus probably walked to two or three of them and said can i use your boat and some of them were angry and frustrated they said get out of here how can you ask for that kind of favor peter obliged jesus christ and said it's okay go ahead and use my boat and when he said go ahead and use my boat you know what happened eventually he finished preaching on this boat and he turned to peter i said peter cast your net for a drug question why did just christ choose peter 
the way our God is, you can never outgive God. That's the way our God is. See, there's nothing you will do to the poor. There's nothing you will do to God. There's no kind of service. There's no kind of offering that God will forget. This is the way the New Testament puts it. He said, God is not, is, is not unrighteous to forget. God is not unrighteous to forget your labor of love. You know what I'm saying so to you? Sometimes Satan wants to mess with you that all the seasons of going to church, all the seasons of of prayer, all the season of studying the Bible, all the season of tithing, all the season of, of giving, God has forgotten. That's not the way God is. He says, God is not unrighteous to forget your labor of love. It may not show up when you want it, but it's going to show up because God is not unrighteous to forget it. And God and Jesus turned to Peter and says, Hey, Peter, just in a way to say thank you for. Let me use your net. And let me say something to you. You know why I'm saying so? Because some of you, Jesus wants to use your net today. How does he want to use your net? He wants to use your phone to encourage someone. You can take that phone and put a powerful status. You can take a clip of the message and put it at your status. You can take an advert of the service and share with your friends. And God wants to use, that is your own net. Some of you, it's your finances he wants to use. That you can use your money to help the end on that project. You can do something fantastic with it. And he said this, let down your net, in, 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 let down, launch into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. Now, now watch this now. He says, let down your nets for a drop, for, for a huge catch. And, and Simon answering said unto him, Master, we've told all night. You know, this is Simon, I could imagine because my background is accounting. So just imagine a non-accountant, like a pastor figure come to me and say, you know, um, I just really believe you should do this financially and that doesn't make sense because I'm an accountant. The way I would treat that would be very different. The reason is simple. The reason is so simple just because of the way I'm trained. Peter, Peter had fished all night. If you know anything about fishing, the night season, it's one of the favorite times to get the best of fish. And they had fished all night and they didn't catch one. They caught nothing. It was a bad day. Then all of a sudden, this guy that has his background in carpentry and could also speak, comes to Peter and says, hey, let down your net for a catch. Peter says, are you crazy? Peter didn't really say that though. And Peter says, excuse me, we've told all night, like we've, we've, tr- we've gone around all the night and I've taken nothing. Many, many of you, you've worked for 40 years and you don't have something to show for it. That season is changing for you. M- many of you have been in banking for so long, but it's almost like, working is almost like putting water in a basket but that season is changing in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth there are people that have done businesses upon businesses you step back for a moment 50 million has passed through you but yet you have nothing to show for it I decree over your life that the season where you work and have nothing to show for it is over this season as you work heaven will respond and you have things to show for it in the name of Jesus Christ if you believe and you receive it anywhere you are listening and watching for stand on your feet and say I believe in amen and see what the Bible says and Peter said nevertheless like it doesn't make sense to me but just because I trust a little nevertheless at thy word I will let down the net now, now that's what I'm going to Jesus Christ said let let down the nets Peter said, I will let down the net. The next line. The Bible says, and when he had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net broke. Listen to me. Listen. One, it's true that the logical reasoning of Peter became an enemy of the supernatural manifestation. I understand that. But what surprised me was this. That your thinking can put a limit on your faith. Your thinking can put a limit on your faith. Jesus Christ said, let down the nets. Peter said, I will let down the net. The reason why Peter said, I will let down the net was the way it thought about it. I'm saying this to you just for a reason. One of the things that would hinder your financial growth is this. Is how you think. That's what I'm saying to you. One of the things that will hinder your financial growth is how you think. As a matter of fact, your income is going to grow and stop at your mental capacity. Because some of you are saying, because this is, this is, I want us to be honest and talk here. 
I, I've seen very great Christians that do not that struggle financially. Some of them are even church leaders. Some of them are even people in ministry. And I've seen people just struggle and struggle and they will pray and believe God and pray and believe God. And you know, their kids are wondering why is God so unfair to us? We know our parents are faithful, but I don't know why we're not able to do what financially. Have you seen some very, very great Christians that believe that God can bless them? They've done all they have to do but have nothing to show for it. Then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, why does that happen? The reason sometimes is this, because once your, your mindset or your thinking can put a cap on what God can do in your life financially. What God intended for Peter was not one net breaking. What God intended was 20, 25 nets breaking. Peter could not conceive that nets will flow in, that fishes will flow into a net. So he used one net and one net was soaked, packed. But if he had used 10 nets, 10 nets would have been breaking. If he had used 20 nets, 20 nets would have been breaking. The question is this, what mentality do you have that is limiting the flow of God's abundance in your life? What is the thinking that you have that is breaking that flow of God's abundance in your life. The reason why is this. The scripture says, says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. God changes our financial fortune by changing our thinking. And, And let me say something to you. You can be more wealthy than that financial mentality. And there's the abundance mentality, there is the scarcity mentality. I'm going to delve into it today. Because today God is going to say, see, many of you have struggled financially. You've run this company, you just wonder, why can't we go beyond 150 million? Today you're going to find out how to scale. Some of you have wondered, how come I can raise just the 180 million to start the business? God is going to open your eyes. Some of you are running huge corporation, and God is going to give the breakthrough idea today. And some of you, it's not even that huge. It's just, how can I have the first hundred thousand? And God is going to show you that today. So someone says, okay. Because let me say something. I know what it is to be frustrated financially. When our church started with the first, within the first couple of months, we had to stop the midweek service. You know why? We couldn't afford to pay. It was, guess what the cost? 3,000 naira. I know what it is. I know what it is. We were, trying to, we were trying to raise money for keyboard and drum set, and we couldn't. You, you know, I know what it is when you say, you, go, you tell the person that is sending food, can I have rice? And the person say, meat or fish? You say, uh, meat or fish? None is good for the mouth. <clears throat> and the reason why you say none is good for the mouth is because there's no money in your pocket to be able to, 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 to buy some. Why some of you, you, you know, you've gone to s- severe embarrassment of trying to pay school fees. Some of you, you are living a constrained life. But does God want to do what? Well? Yes. How would that happen? Can you pay some attention? If, you've, if you know someone that is struggling financially, maybe there's a time to get them on the phone and say, this is your service, get onto it. So, if our finance is going to change, our thinking must change. Let me give you an ex- a good example. Statistics says this, that most people that win lottery... When they win lottery, Baba Jebo, all the lottery, when they win all the lottery, guess what? After about two or three years, max five years, they go back to the poverty they had before, to the level of what they had before. Meaning that if all they had to their name before was $1,000 and they won $5 million, after about three years, they will go back to the level of what? $1,000. You know why? Whatever money they make, they cannot keep because their mind cannot keep it. That is huge. And that's why we notice some of you help your relatives, your friends, your cousins. You give them money from time to time. And you're surprised and annoyed when they come back to you and they say they want more. It's not their fault. You don't change a man's state by giving him money. You change a man's state by changing his mind. If you want to change a man's state, you change it by changing his mind. Should I shock you? If by 2020... December, we moved all Nigerians, we moved them to the U.S., we moved all U.S. students into Nigeria, and we gave it 10 years. You know what will happen? By the time you go to the U.S., California, 
What you'll see in California is this. You'll see trucks, motorway buses saying, Los Angeles, oh, Los Angeles, oh, 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 enter, 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 Los Angeles, enter, enter. And, and, and the reason why is that the environment, that's the power of the thinking on the inside. It, it affects everything. You will come to Nigeria and you see an organized Nigeria, you see 24 power elect, you know, light, and the reason is the way they think. And, and you know, I thought, the first time I thought about this, like, this might not be applicable until I traveled to another country that was a developed country. And in that developed country, I went to the Nigerian embassy. And guess what? When everybody had 24 hours light, the Nigerian embassy didn't have light. I was shocked. Just the way we think. The way you think tells you what's normal and what's not normal. I remember, the, I remember one time I traveled as an adult. One of the first time I traveled as an adult. I remember I was trying to iron. I, I got there and said, oh, my meeting is tomorrow. Before they take light, let me iron. So I got my stuff out. I'm like, what's wrong with me? They don't take light here. Why am I struggling to iron? Because my mind. If you're going to change a man's life, you change the way he thinks. Have you, have you, see, so the same way, the lottery winners, they lose the money. The money will reduce up to the point where they have capacity for. Same thing. When you see self-made millionaires, you know, and I have a lot of examples here. Talk about Richard Branson. Talk about Larry King. Talk about what Disney. Talk about Donald Trump. This, all these men I said to you, almost, some of them became bankrupt. They ran to zero. Guess what? When self-made millionaires become bankrupt and run to zero, most often, 90% out of the, most of the time, they get back to wealth. You know why? Even when they lose their money, they don't lose their millionaire mindset. And it's your mindset and how you process things that attracts wealth to you. So the reason why a lot of Christians are struggling is this. They are born again and God can provide but they do not have the millionaire's mindset. That mindset of abundance that makes them take decision, have habits, that provokes and promotes them into new financial levels. And when we talk about incubating the force of increase, that's what you're meant to do. So you see, what Disney lost everything. Donald Trump, same thing. Larry, Larry King, same thing. Richard Branson was so broke, the bank says, pay us back. He told the bank, I'm broke. All I can do is declare bankruptcy. They say, all I can do to pay you back is for you to loan me some more money and I'll give you back your money. Can you imagine that? Because there's just a way. There's just a way they think. How do they think? When you, so, so there are two kinds of thinking. I want to note that there are two kinds of thinking. There is abundance mentality. There's scarcity mentality. So when people are poor, see, physical poverty is an expression of internal poverty and scarcity thinking. Of course, I'm going to put a caveat here. There are people that their poverty is... You know, it's a function of factors. They are imprisoned. People are marginalized. They're in war zones and they can't do anything. I'm not going to speak down on them. I respect them. But, I, you know, I respect them. So, what, what, what's caste mentality like? I, I will tell you what caste mentality is, is to you. Number one, this is how we manifest. When people have caste mentality, they believe that life happens to me. So, when you say, what about your finance? Ah, <laughs> no job, oh. Ah. What do we go do? We the masses, oh, because in scarcity mentality, life happens to me. In abundance thinking, what do you believe? You believe I create my life. Do you remember the talent? The talent story in March 25. In March 25, the people see March 25. Let me say something quickly. Everyone, look up here, please. In March 25, the three servants were all faithful, but two were fruitful. Oh my God. The three, the one that had five was faithful. The one that had two was faithful. The one that had one was faithful. How do I know? Because they all brought back the talents. You can be faithful and not fruitful. Oh my God. <laughs> you can be faithful and not fruitful. But, but guess what? The one that brought back one talent, what did he say? He said, oh, you know, I know the kind of person you are. You know, I, I know you. And all of a sudden, what was she saying? She said, the reason why the talents did not grow, I wasn't fruitful, was because, you know, it's all about you. I can influence you. But the one that brought back five talents and brought back two talents, this is what they said. He said, you gave me five. You gave me two. I went and added traded and this is extra. What did they do? They took responsibility for your life. When you have scarcity mentality, you keep blaming people, government, parents, background, education for your lack of success. When you have 
abundance mentality, you understand that I am the one that creates my future. When you complain a lot, you begin to attract what? Crap. People that complain a lot attract crap. When you have this kind of thing, you, you're always blaming. You're always blaming, always justifying why you are poor. You know, always complaining. The second way scarcity mentality works is this. People that have scarcity mentality, they want to be rich. People that have abundance mentality are committed to being rich. So says, that sounds similar, very different. Want to be rich is that, yeah, I wouldn't mind. It's a great thing to be rich. Committed to be rich means I'm intentional and I have a plan to become rich. That's what it is. Do you know what? Most people that are listening to me right now, you just say, Father, bless me. Father, bless me. Father, bless me. Father, bless me. But what does the Bible say? It says, you ask and you receive more. James chapter 1. Because you ask and miss. And miss means that you don't ask with specific, with some level of, you know, of being specific. You are saying, the question, do you have key financial goals you are setting in your life? People will come to us guys. They turn, they touch me. They say, what do you want from me? That's the question. That's the question. I know you are praying for a job. What kind of job are you praying for? The reason why is this. The reason why scarcity mentality cannot be specific is this. Because this is why they can't be specific when it comes to a job, when it comes to an amount of money they want to make. Because they are already afraid that it's not enough. They may not get what they want. And because they know they may never get what they want, they act out their fear by not being specific. Abundance mentality says, there's so much out there for me. I can determine what I want. I can go for what I want. I can believe for what I want. And what does the Bible say? He said, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, not a figurative mountain, a specific mountain. Your mountain can be capital of 50 million naira. He said, whosoever shall say to this mountain, your mountain can be joblessness. Shall say to this mountain, you have to be specific and speak specifically to that mountain. Glory to God. Huh. What's the difference between scarcity mentality and abundance mentality? I'll, I'll tell you. You know, one of the biggest stories you have to read in the Bible is the story of Lazarus. Because the Bible says Lazarus was a righteous man, but he was very poor. You know, when I studied the Bible, I mean, the text will come on the screen. The Bible says, God showed me why Lazarus was poor. You know what God said? What the Bible says? The Bible says, and Lazarus desiring to be fed with the crumbs that fell from the rich man's table. Listen to me. Lazarus' financial goal, his desire was to be fed with crumbs. It was not that God could not do anything. What does God promise us? God says it will produce our heart desire. This is brother Lazarus, past Lazarus. His desire was to be fed with the crumbs that fell from the table. Maybe your desire is just to have the small BQ. God will give it to you. But there are some of us that understand we need to feed people in Sudan. God has to bless us to shake the world. We are sponsors of the gospel. We need to have money to help the poor. We need to have money to rescue girls from sex trafficking. We need to have money to help northern Nigeria. We need to have money to help places like Rwanda where there was genocide. We understand that we are money missionaries on a mission. Glory to God. We believe that. See, we, we, we've gone beyond thinking of having money for ourselves. No, sir. We have become channels through money used to God uses money to touch people. He pays coffees through us. He builds roads through us. He builds villages through us. That's what he does. Our desire is not just give me so I will eat and have a car in, and have a house in Panana Island. Too small. We need finance to shake the world. Glory to God. Different between scarcity mentality and abundance mentality. Scarcity mentality focuses on obstacles. Abundance mentality focuses on opportunities. Huh? Right in this season where they say there's recession, do you know that Apple has become the largest pop, quoted public company? Now one of the few companies that is doing over one trillion dollars worth. If I'm right, Apple's budget can buy some African countries. And in a recession, Netflix is going crazy in price. Zoom stock price going crazy. The reason why is that 
the people have scarcity they're always focused on on what they're focused on obstacles oh dollar price has gone up that's why i can't do this oh um, um, there's no cash that's why i can't do this and, and they keep pointing to this and keep pointing to that but people that have abundance thinking as looking why others are looking at the opportunities at, at the obstacles they are looking at the opportunity that was why david was different everybody saw goliath and saw a what an obstacle david saw goliath and saw his opportunity he told them what will be done to the man that kills this man hallelujah he said my time has come you know what the bible says about you he says when men said there's a cast down when men says a recession he said you will say you will say that reason lifting up put your hands upon your chest and say this is the word of god to me that in this season i'm taking off glory to god Scarcity mentality and abundance mentality. Scarcity mentality, think small. Why do they think small? Because it's all about fear. It's, it's, a, it's a mentality that is based on fear. Abundance mentality thinks big. Scarcity mentality. Maybe I want to stop on this one. When you have scarcity mentality, when you lose money, I, I need to say that clearly. When you have scarcity mentality and you lose money, it tells you that your loss is permanent and it's over. When you have abundance mentality, when you lose money, you understand you only bought a lesson, a financial lesson. You know what I'm saying? So some of you have been stuck and by the Spirit of God, I feel I'm speaking to people right here at home right now. Some of you have been stuck because of certain deals you did and went bad. You lost certain investment and since that time, you've been nursing a money wound. You've been saying, I will never try new things again. My brother, that is cast mentality. Get over it. You must understand there's nobody that is worthy or rich today that did not lose money but the difference is this. They took their loss as a financial lesson but you are taking your loss as a permanent dig in a verdict upon your destiny. You have to go back to recover what you've lost because that's what you have to do. So the question is this. Pastor, from what you've said today, it seems as if I have scarcity mentality. I, I, I know what you mean because I also, I also grew in that culture. I also grew in that culture. And let me tell you something. Huh. Someone say, how did they get it? We, we got scarcity mentality from what? From verbal, from verbal conversations. That's how we're raised, from modeling, from verbal conversations. In, in, in my local dialect, there's a saying that says that money is an amount of lions. Meaning that for you to be rich, you have to die. And what that does to us, that it makes us afraid. You know, you know let me tell you something. In, the, in this environment where I live, in this country... There's a, there's a mentality that if you are wealthy, you are a thief or you're corrupt. And you know what that means? When that is underlined in your mind, every time you need to take, every time you want to take decisions that will make you rich, your subconscious that knows you value integri integrity will begin to pull you down because you put a mindset there. Your, your mindset says you don't want to become that rich because you'll be corrupt. You need to, you need to begin to rewire your mind. When you see young girls that are driving cars, oh, she's a prostitute, she speaks to everybody. That's how. When you see young boys that make money, oh, he's a fraudster. <laughs> when you see pastors that are doing well, oh, yahoo, yahoo, pastors. <laughs> you know, because we just explain, we, you know why? Because in our environment, success is not common. So when we see success, we attack it. How do you change mentality? The first thing is this. You need to identify the scarcity mentality that you have. How do you identify scarcity mentality? Psalm 119 verse 105. Psalm 119 verse 105. How do you identify scarcity mentality? You know what I'm saying so? Sometimes scarcity mentality are so natural to us, it takes the, it takes the power of God to spot it. I'm telling you. I'm tell, you will not even know you have it. How, do, how does it happen? How do you identify this mentality? Psalm 119 verse 105. He says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. What do you do? This is what you do if you want God to expose the mentality to your heart. Sometimes you even have people that don't work financially but have scarcity mentality. 
you go to the word of God and this is what you do. You, as you study the word of God prayerfully, this is not a casual reading of the word of God. No, that's what I'm talking about. You go to the word of God with a sole intention and say, Heavenly Father, as I read in your word today, let the word of God shine. Because the Bible says the word is lamp and light. So, you, by the spirit of God, the Lord will take his word and begin to shine in the corners of your heart. You will begin to see, wow, I'm afraid. Why am I afraid of taking risk? Because I am not seeing a fear of money failure. Why am I afraid of this? And it will be showing you. But that thing happens. This is not just regular Bible study. This is actually a very spirited search. That's why I call it. How do I know that? Because Proverbs 20:27 20, says that the spirit of the man is the candle of the Lord, and the Lord searches the inward part of the belly. So God is touching in that part of you. So as you go with your spirit, you go into the word, as you begin to open the word, and let me say something to you. When you are doing this kind of study, you don't argue, you don't excuse, you don't say this and this. no, no, no. You come plainly, you come plainly before the Lord. As you come plainly in a prayerful spirit, the Lord will begin to reveal to you what? He'll begin to reveal to you those mentality. You will just notice, why do you struggle to give? Um, and the reason why you struggle to give is this. It's a fear. If I give, I will never have enough. And it says, why do you struggle? Why, why do you scream when it's money? You got it from your father. Why did the father scream money? What did you learn from me? You got the idea that money was huge. Some of you just don't love to be rich because of the dirty stories you've heard. And God began to deal with you and remove those things. So, it's a prayerful and spiritual search from scriptures. And, and let me say something to you. How does it happen? You go into the Bible and just begin to study. You just begin to study. Just begin to study. Some of you are nursing what I call money wounds. What are money wounds? Money wounds are wounds, emotional wounds that come from a bad experience with money. Either you invested or lost it. There's a way your parents raised you when they came to money. There's a way your father shouted at you when they came to money and you lost it. And as you expose yourself to God's word, Hebrews 4 says the word of God is the design of thought. It's, a, it, it's, a, it's, it's sharper than every, 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 every double-edged sword. It pierced through. As you go, it begins to do something. The second thing you have to do is this, which is very powerful. Second thing you have to do. How do I change the mentality? As you begin to study the word of God, revelations of the word of God begin to unfold in your spirit. And this, a, a good example is this. Bishop Oyedepo had said something very powerful and I really respect him. Bishop said that he was really broke and had no money. All of a sudden, he took a book by Gloria Copeland. God's will is, is for your prosperity. Went on a three days fast. That's the search I'm talking about. You accomplish such search with fasting and prayer. So God will reveal things to you. As he went, he said, when I was done reading it, I just told myself, I will never be poor again. He, he said it. Nothing had changed physically, but his mind has changed. You know why? Listen to me, everybody. Listen to me, everybody. The way, the principal way that God changes people's status is by selling his word. I'm telling you. That's why in the Old Testament, when there was a financial crisis, what will happen is this. A prophet will come and bring about a word. The word, because in that word is light. In that word is illumination. In that word is revelation. Your problem is not the problem you have. The problem is that you don't know what to do. The Bible says the way of a foolish man wearied every one of them because he doesn't know how to go into the city. What do you do to know how to go into the city? When the prophetic word like this is coming, you embrace with your spirit flight will flash down as light dawns on your spirit wisdom will be available the challenge is this you don't know what to do listen to me there are obvious things holding you down financially obvious things holding your business down obvious things obvious things holding your status make you go around the, like, like, a stack, like a stagnation point you are the only one that cannot see it everybody can see it as you go to god's world the light of god will shine and when it shines guess what happens liberty liberation emancipation becomes your portion the challenge is this most christians ought to pray but they don't know how to read the bible you will this message you'll go back again you will you will listen why because how god changes things is by what sending his word Hallelujah. How God changes things by sending his word. Let me close with this. I would love for you to join us this midweek service. There are some depths I would love to cover. You know, because I just don't want to rush some things. How God changes you by sending his word. Listen to me. <laughs> very powerful concept. Very, very powerful concept. 
he will send his word. Look at the Bible. I mean, very clear in the Bible. He told Peter, Peter had caught nothing all night. He said, let down your net for a catch. He sent the word came. You know, it was very powerful. He told Philip, where can we buy bread to feed them? Very, very powerful. He said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. He said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Listen to me, the Bible has so many Bible promises. Question, this is a question I want to ask you. Why does someone promise you something? People only promise when they feel as if a time will come that you will doubt. Situation and circumstances will make you doubt. That's why there's promises. Promises are a response to God seeing the future and knowing that times will come when you'll be doubting. So God promised ahead of time. Meaning that what? When you get to that place where you feel uncertain, where you feel as if you cannot trust, where you feel as if things are going awire, he said, remember I promised you. Let me read some promise of God to you. Let me read some promise of God to you. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 11. He says this, he says, the Lord, this is in NIV, the Lord will grant you abundant prosperity. This is the promise of God to you. He said, hallelujah, hallelujah. Deuteronomy 28 verse 11, he says, the Lord will grant you abundant prosperity in the fruit of your womb. That means you will not be barren. He says, the young of your livestock, the crop of your field, and in the land is swore unto the ancestors to give to you. He said, the Lord will grant you abundant abundant prosperity you will not be managing it will be abundant you told me chapter 8 verse 18 he says this verse um, niv again but remember the lord your god for it is him that gives you the ability to produce well listen to me you must stay i have a wealth producing mechanism inside me i have that supernatural ability when i start a business with ten thousand, it grows to hundred thousand because i have the ability to produce well you must say look at proverbs chapter 10 verse 22 look at what king james says the blessing of the lord it make it rich this which has to do with finances and it add no sorrow to it you know what if i were you i would begin to write the scriptures down because these are the ways you begin to absorb revelation you are you are absorbing revelation these are god's promises god knew that tough times will come and you want to doubt him and doubt things so he promised ahead of time look at all the bible says psalm 145 verse 19 he says he fulfills the desires of them that fear him he will also hear that cry and save them he said the lord fulfills my desire is your desire for a spouse the lord fulfill my desire is it for a job in chevron the lord fulfill my desire is it for an international office in hong kong the lord fulfills my desire why he fulfills the desire of the righteous psalm 68 verse 19 he said blessed be the lord who daily loaded us with benefit you will declare as you go out this week i'm being loaded you know what it means to lord like a truck i'm being loaded with benefit as i'm living finances loaded hallelujah as i'm living jobs are loaded hallelujah as i'm living deals are loaded there's no way you will hear this and you will explode the problem is that you keep listening to fear you keep listening to scarcity you absorb scarcity change what you listen to ah ha, ha. what do you do if a channel is saying nonsense on dstv you change the channel the channel you have been listening to have been saying what they should not be saying you change the right to the right channel this is the gtv god's news coming to you what does god say he says now he that ministers seed to the sower shall both minister bread for your food and multiply your fruit of righteousness that's in second corinthians chapter 9 verse 9 that's what he says hallelujah i can keep going on and on and on psalm 23 psalm 23 says the lord is my shepherd i shall not want i'm not going to want for deals i'm not going to want for money whatever i want if it's pounds i have it if it's dollars i have it if it's riches i have it if it's children i have it why the lord is my shepherd praise god hallelujah the lines are falling onto me in pleasant places hallelujah so what are you doing i'm reculturing my mind i'm switching from scarcity to what? I'm switching to abundance. How did I learn scarcity mentality? My mother spoke to me. I watched the news on OGTV, on DSTV, how things were scarce. I learned scarcity from the system. Do you know as a child, you didn't know scarcity? You didn't know scarcity. You even asked your father to buy you a plane. Do you know what you were asking for? You were so bold. 
He didn't know there was scarcity. But as you grew older, you learn scarcity. If I learn scarcity, I can unlearn scarcity. If I learn scarcity, I can learn abundance. How can I learn abundance? I reprogram myself with the word. I reprogram my mind with the word. Hallelujah. No wonder Second Corinthians says, as we behold in the image, he said, as we behold in that image, the word of God, he said, we have been transformed. Hallelujah. From glory to glory. Hallelujah. Praise God. From glory to glory. Hallelujah. My life is upward and forward. My life is fulfilled. I hit my target. I surpassed my goal. I'm doing well financially. I belong to the people of the faith, faithful and fruitful. In the name of Jesus. Stand up, let's pray. Oh Lord. Listen. Put your index finger on your forehead. Say in the name of Jesus. My life is a beautiful life. Neither and want is far from me. All I see around me is abundance. Luxurious abundance. My capacity to produce goods, services, values, ideas that in turn brings about huge substantial income is being multiplied right now the money fears i had based on what was said to me as losses hold i declare that the lord is my shepherd i shall not want amen